Now let us dwell a little bit about the way we have reduced a stochastic control problem with imperfect information to one with perfect information. What have we done in this problem? in this reduction we, we observed that the state can be thought the, the we observed that the information has this sort of recursive formula to it. The information at time k plus 1 can be thought can be given is given as a function of information at time k, the action at time k and the disturbance at time k plus 1. So, we, we thought of this particular thing as our new state equation and then the, the information at time k as the new state. The action remained the same, the action was then chosen as a function of the information at time k and this z k plus 1 was the disturbance at time k. Now this, this simple uh, sort of observation may make you believe that this kind of reduction uh, is, is, is rather easy and as a result of that there is no really no uh, need to study problems of imperfect state information in any uh, further detail because now we have been able to reduce them to a problems of perfect information by just simply redefining the state. So, by redefining the state variable uh, uh, the, uh, the problem has uh, reduced to that of perfect state information. Now, this reduction actually comes at a certain uh, comes at a certain price and the price that we pay for this reduction is the dramatic increase that we see in the complexity of the problem. So, what is the what is the state space now of this particular problem if I may ask you. So, the state space is the space of information information vectors uh, at any time. So, the state space at time k is the, sp is the space of the of k dimension uh, of all the information vectors up until time k, okay. the space of all the possible information vectors at that time k. So, in general this could be for instance uh, the, the uh, this here in our problem is the, is the set of all observations up until time k and all the actions that you could have taken at time k. So, this is the, so this here is the state space of the new information vector or of the new state vector which is our information vector. Now, this is the vector at time k. Now, at time k plus 1 you have an additional some additional observation, you have an additional observation and you have taken also an additional action by that time. So, the information vector at time k plus 1 would grow, you would now have a longer information vector at time k plus 1. So, the space of the information vector is also going to be a larger space now which was it will it was it will now be the vector uh, vector of information it will be the set of information vectors at time k plus 1. This this complexity keeps growing at each time step at each time step the new state space of the problem becomes larger and larger uh, and becomes more and more involved. So, once if you may recall we had earlier discussed what the uh, what the set of all history dependent policies were for uh, for uh, for Markov decision processes and there we had seen how the number of such policies explores exponentially or in fact super exponentially because because the number of uh, uh, because the number of histories up until a certain time itself grows very very fast so the same sort of complexity explosion in complexity occurs when we do this uh, when we do this reduction in this particular way because now the information vector also keeps growing with time and therefore the set of possible information vectors grows with time and as a result of that when we do when we apply the dynamic programming algorithm on this per, on this problem the number of values of i i k that we need or i n minus 1 that we that we need to solve this minimization for also grows uh, grows with time and grows dramatically uh, more with time right so as a result this this kind while this kind of a uh, uh, dp algorithm can be written out formally for every problem with imp, uh, with imperfect uh, information the 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 the, the, the challenge is in actually doing this uh, practically 
in, in any kind of computationally feasible or tractable way because doing this minimization for every i k is, is you know is a horrendous task. So, we will do this for an actual problem nonetheless uh, the problem we will choose is the machine repair problem. So, here is our machine repair problem. So, what is this problem? This, this that we have a machine, a machine can be in which can be in two possible states. in one of two states. Now, the states are denoted P and P bar. The P corresponds to uh, the state uh, corresponds to proper condition that the machine is in uh, is in a proper condition the is in the workable condition and P, uh, P bar is uh, is that the machine is in improper condition. Right. So, some kind uh, it is a, so P is a good state and P bar is a bad state. Now, if we operate the machine while it is in a proper condition, if we operate it for one more time step. So, if machine in state P is operated. for one time period it stays then there are two possibilities it stays in P with probability two thirds and the other possibility is that it will uh, it will uh, it will become improper after this. So, it goes to goes to state p bar with probability one third right. So, if you start it with in state p when it is in a proper condition it will remain in proper condition with probability two third uh, after one time period or it, uh, it may and with probability one third it will go to an improper state which is p bar. Of course, if the machine is in improper state if a machine is in improper state. So, it means in it is in state p bar and it remains in state p bar with probability 1. Right. Now, we will operate this machine for a total of 3 time periods total of three time periods that is that is the operating life of the machine that, that we are considering here and the uh, the machine starts with assume that suppose it starts in state in state P suppose. Now, at the end of the first and second time periods at the end of the first and second time periods when the machine is inspected. Is inspected. Okay. The machine is inspected and now after once you do an inspection there are two possible outcomes. The, uh, we, the possible outcomes are that you can get an outcome good or you can get an outcome bad. Now, good here just says that it is probably in good state, probably it just says that the machine is probably in good state. 
and this when we get the outcome B it says that it is probably in bad state. Now, the, the, the probabilities themselves depend on the state of the machine itself. So, if, if the machine is already in state uh, state P, then the you get the, prob the probability of you getting good as the, uh, as, the, uh, as the outcome of your inspection is, is 3 4. So, with 3 4 probability you get uh, we get good when the machine is already in state B. If the machine is in and we get one with one fourth probability you get that the machine is in bad state when you start with uh, when you are starting with uh, when the machine is in is in state P. On the other hand if the machine is in state state P bar then we get good with probability one fourth and we get bad. with probability 3 4. Now, at the after each inspection, so this is the, so we get and we do an inspection at the end of the first and second time period and after each inspection, after each inspection we we we, need, we have a choice, we can take two possible actions. The two possible actions are one is to continue that is C is continue to continue the operation of the machine no, uh, no need for any, any further intervention just continue. The other is S which is stop, stop the machine Determinate state. Okay, stop the machine. Determine uh, its state uh, through an accurate diagnosis. So you do an accurate diagnosis. So remember, the earlier thing was was only giving a probable outcome, probably good, probably bad. Now you do an accurate diagnosis. Do an accurate diagnosis, and and if it is in state P bar, that means if it is in the bad state. If it is in state P bar, then bring it back to P. Bring it back to state P. Right now, we here we these these operations incur a cost. So there is a cost uh, which is two units. Starting the period when so it's a cost of two units for starting the period with uh, in state in state P bar and it is zero if you start in in state P. That means if you start in good uh, in uh, that particular period in in a good state, then your cost is zero. Okay. Now you, the cost of cost of stopping, stop and repair. That means the stop and repair action, which is this, which is the which is your action S. This cost is one unit. And terminal, and we have a terminal cost of zero. So the cost of continuing is is zero, and the cost of stopping and repairing is one unit. 
So, if you if you happen to start the uh, start, uh, start the machine in a, sta in a state p bar that means in your when the state is bad then you incur a cost of 2 units if you start it in state p which is the good state you do not incur any cost. If you continue there is no cost of continuing but if you if you stop and repair then there is a cost of uh, of 1 unit for taking that stop and repair action. So, we can represent the uh, transition of this of this machine through a, through this figure here. So, suppose let me write draw this kind of a figure here where these two are the states the machine could start with could be in say. Now, when it starts in state p it continues and goes to state remains in state p with the probability of 2 thirds or it could go to a state p bar at the next time step with probability 1 third. If it is starting from in state p bar it remains in state p bar with probability 1. So, this here is a state transition this represent this is there for any at any time at any time this is your state transition. Now, if you are in state uh, p the inspection could yield an answer g with probability 3 fourth or could yield an answer b with probability 1 fourth. Al alternatively if you are in state p bar then you get an answer g with probability 1 fourth and if you are if you are in state uh, p bar you get an answer b with probability 3 fourth. So, this here is the is the inspection phase. All right. Now, uh, as as you can see here the tri the problem that we face here is that we do not actually know the state of the true state of the machine. We only know the outcome of inspections and then if we in fact uh, uh, if we keep the machine running running when it is in a bad state we uh, if there is a chance that it will uh, it it will uh, you know it will incur as a cost because it is it is it is in a bad state. On the other hand if if by uh, uh, on the other hand taking uh, stopping and repairing always incurs as a cost of 1 unit. Uh, that that is something that we always uh, have to bear if we decide to stop at any time step ok. So, this is basically the dilemma of the problem. Now, the problem is to uh, the, the problem for us is to decide what is the optimal policy that minimizes the total cost that we will incur over 3 over the 3 time step that we are choosing ok. So, determine the problem is to determine the optimal policy. That minimizes expected cost over 3 time periods. So, in other words what we want to do is we want to find see remember the actions that we have to take the policy will describe the action that we have to take the actions that we need to take have to be chosen after we get the result of the inspections. So, we get a result of the inspections at the end of time period of the, at the end of the first two time periods ok. So, after at the end of time period 1 and then at the end of time period 2. So, what we need to do is we need to decide based on the result of those two uh, based on the results of the that we get of the inspections that have happened at those two time periods and the history of the problem that we have so up until that time we have we want to determine what the optimal action would be as a function of that information. So, we want to we want to know if we should be taking uh, taking action uh, taking the action to continue or taking the action to stop at based on the information that we have at that time all right. So, 
problem is to basically find the optimal action after the, the first infection inspection after the first inspection okay so after the so the what we want to know is what the optimal action that we will choose after the first inspection after the result of the first inspection is known okay and and the optimal action after the result of the first and second inspections. So, and the optimal action after the result of the first and second inspection and so what else do we know at the second uh, when we are taking the second decision uh, we we, uh, we also know the action that you took after the first inspection and the action taken after the first inspection is known. So, we want to find the we want to find an optimal action of the optimal set optimal actions that have to be chosen at two time steps. The first is after the first inspection, then the second is after the second inspection. But what we know at the second inspection is that we know the uh, the result of the first inspection and the result of the second inspection and we also know the action that you ha we had taken at the first inspection. So, this is what we know at the second after the second inspection and we need to find the optimal action after the second after this taking into account this information. So, the optimal action has to be chosen as a function of this information. So, after as a function of the first inspection of, of the result of the first inspection and second in the second case the optimal action has to be chosen as a function of these three pieces of information the result of the first inspection the result of the second inspection and the uh, the uh, the uh, the result uh, and the action that we chose at after the first inspection. Okay. So in the next uh, next lecture, what we will do is we will actually formulate this uh, this problem as a, a stochastic control problem with imperfect state information. <laughs>